For the best part of a century, Russia was a soulless, godless sort of place. The communists made quite sure of that. With the revolution came a grim determination to stamp out religion. Under Lenin, and particularly under Stalin, Christians were the enemies of the state. Churches were destroyed, priests and nuns jailed, often murdered. Even church bells and religious music were banned. Well, how times have changed. In the new Russia, there's been a Christian revival, a kind of resurrection. The Orthodox Church is back in business and its missionaries are out in force spreading the word. A lazy late summer afternoon on the River Don in southern Russia. Then, out of the blue, comes a vision that shows maybe God does work in mysterious ways. Reverence interrupts the reverie. After 70 years of banishment under communism, Christianity in Russia is being born again. Here on one of the nation's great waterways, young missionaries are once again calling the faithful back to the Orthodox Church. You must acknowledge this is an extraordinary scene, a floating church coming down the river. You don't see that in too many parts of the world. Many people would call it a miracle. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. That's that's what we think. It's a miracle. Yeah, it's it's, it's unbelievable. Those... Just a miracle. Just a miracle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> To understand this miracle, there's no better place to start in Moscow than right next door to the Kremlin, at the Cathedral of Christ the Saviour. The parishioners here today grew up under atheistic communism, but now they've come rushing back to the religion of their grandparents. At first glance, the cathedral itself looks as though it's been around for a thousand years, roughly the age of the Orthodox Church itself. But this majestic building is actually brand new. It was built to replace one that was deliberately destroyed. It's hard to believe now that Joseph Stalin had the original church here blown up and replaced with a municipal swimming pool. In the Stalinist times, they wanted also to control every aspect of, of, of the life of the people and every personality. They didn't uh, want any ideological opposition, any, any alternative idea in the society. Stalin surpassed Hitler in his brutality. Millions were arrested tortured and executed. Among them, countless priests, nuns and churchgoers. A number of priests were executed in a, in a very cruel way, uh, hanged or shot. Father Zedlod Chaplin's church complex in Moscow was spared demolition, but Stalin had it converted into a prison. Uh, one church was used for, for a club of the prison, Another church, uh, I think, was used as a sporting hall and the administrative building of the prison. This building was uh, a building for prison cells. For some reason, the communists had a particular loathing for church bells. Russian bells aren't easy on the ear, but that was no justification for banning them all through the Soviet years. Many were simply destroyed. Some, for maximum symbolic effect, were tipped from rooftops. What would have happened if you'd rung the bells the way you did today during uh, Stalin's time? I could be found in the prison somewhere 
So when the north of Russia with a 10 years sentence, 10 years sentence in prison. Just for ringing the bells? Yes, for ringing the bell. The communists use Father Andre Dorokin's church to house circus animals. And for good measure, they confiscated the bell bells that some Orthodox Christians actually believe have a soul through which God speaks directly. It's not an action of my hands, it's an action of the God. It's I only uh, a performer, but it's a ringing of the God himself. Remarkably, the Russian church's holiest of holies, the Zagorsk Monastery, survived. It's an astonishingly ornate and quite spectacular place dating from the 1400s. But today it's a sort of divine Disneyland. Here, for instance, pilgrims can touch the right hand of St. Stephen, the first of the Christian martyrs. The monks still pray every day at 5 a.m much the same as they probably did 500 years ago, and still hold the faithful in awe. Here too, past the saints and patriarchs, young men are inducted into the priesthood. So strong is the church revival that this year there are just on a thousand priestly pupils. That's more than ever before. And every one of them is on a mission. A mission to reassert the church's influence in every corner of Russia. Here though, the mission is unique. For the past few summers, when the ice on the Don River melts, this converted barge, with this little band of missionaries, visits hundreds of tiny villages, places too small and poor to have a church of their own. There's Father Gennady and his wife Maria, their twin sons Peter and Nikolai, who double as altar boys. There are also three deckhands and a helmsman, and of course a choir. Sveta and Anya. They have joined the River Crusade while on holidays. When not singing, they teach English at university. But we came to religion only when we were 25. Yeah, it was just about Both six years ago. Is that right? Yeah. Actually, I'm not sorry to say this, but the first of our religion, our first religion was the Beatles, actually. <laughs> Yeah, that was when we were yeah. 14. F 14, <laughs> yes. That's something we really believed in very seriously. Generations of Tsars, wars without end and 70 years of communism have all come and gone, but in the villages around here, little seems to have changed. Old-time religion is back, and with all the old beliefs and rituals. Some of the truly devout believe that Stalin, instead of destroying the church, actually made it stronger. Some people in the church say that in order to go back to true religion, the church uh, needed to um, give a lot of uh, martyrs, martyrs, you see, and also the, all this period of uh, civil war and then uh, uh, the c concentration camps built by Stalin where millions of people died and the, in a way World War II was, was like our... Um, Purification kind of? Yes, and a sacrifice in a way that we had to give in order to uh, get our religion back. But even the strongest faith has its limitations. On this day, lacking heavenly guidance and earthly navigation, the church ran hard aground on a sand dune. The prayers of Father Gennady and the special songs of praise went unanswered. 
we were stuck fast. Well, for 12 hours anyway, and then miraculously, we were back in motion, back on schedule. Father, over the four years that you've been doing this, how many people do you think you might have baptized? I don't keep exact figures, but it would be over 2,000. And here in the back blocks, every soul counts. The Orthodox Church believes Russians are vulnerable right now, vulnerable to interlopers from the other faiths. Are you worried that if you don't do this, then others like uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons will come and steal some of your flock? Of course. Over the last 80 years, the church almost has not existed and people are not educated enough. It's very easy to teach them wrong things. Missionaries come from other countries and they try to preach things that contradicts Christ's teaching. We find that very dangerous. And that's why we are trying to bring them back to the church. Even today, for most Russians, life is still very hard. And many are now seeking comfort in the old ways. And for better or worse, for the first time in 70 odd years, it's safe again for priests like Father Gennady to go out in search of lost souls. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.